Good evening. Well, thank you everyone for coming out. Thank you. Um, we want to start tonight's meeting off with, uh, if you want to give the park update, Mike. Okay. Let's get right to it. So some of the things we've been doing since we've last seen each other, and uh, obviously uh, you can look around and see that there are no more holiday decorations. Uh, we've got <laughs> taken those down uh, and uh, part of what we do during this time of year. Another major part of what we've been doing, as you're all well aware, is uh, bringing Jack Amiette on board and doing the work over there to beautify it, the landscaping and those sorts of things. And hopefully you've noticed the white vinyl fence that's up down there. We, we are over there. We really like that look for that area. We think it softens that uh, curb up a little bit. It gives it a better look and we like it so much. We're going to implement some of those changes even at uh, the commons as we move forward through some time. The split rail is a nice look, but the, the vinyl split rails looks a little cleaner and a little nicer. Um, this time of year, uh, we're, we're getting the ball fields ready for our athletics uh, group. Uh, they have their youth and uh, youth and adults, and I, I think the adults have started scrimmaging. Uh, the youth are soon to start, but you know, obviously, we want to have the fields looking good for when uh, they start their games. And I think we're just about there to having the fields looking good, so that's a good thing. Uh, what does that mean to us? For us, you know, we go through a process of getting the fields ready. You know, we have to re-edge. You know, some of our fields have grass and fields with baselines, so we have to go through and edge them, level them. It's not a one-day process to do that sort of thing. We have to bring more clay in, level the fields out, and get them uh, in a safe position so when these children or adults go out on the fields that they're able to participate in whatever sport or games that we're having out there in the safest manner that we can make it for them, which is hopefully very safe. Uh, so that's kind of where we have been from a park side of the house, obviously moving forward, uh, we've been out mowing already this year. Um, I will tell you, we've tried not to mow though, because the problem with mowing is once you start, it does kind of promote you to continue on. Uh, so we've tried to do our best to limit the mowing, but I don't think the weather's going to co cooperate with us moving forward. Definitely the rain yesterday, uh, warming up, We'll, we'll be full-fledged out mowing soon. And how are we going to remedy that moving forward? We're going to talk to you a little bit about that uh, later on. I know Susan's going to mention some things about our um, One City Moment that uh, hopefully will have an impact, not just on the Parks Department, but the recreation side of the house, as well as everybody within the city departments. And that's a good thing. And we'll share that news in a little bit with you. And last but not least, I want to talk to you all about uh, where we're at with our 400 acres. So as you're aware, city purchased some property a little while ago off of Williamsburg, and we have started a process to uh, work with some um, firms that uh, have given us some proposals about what they've done in the past with pieces of property and what potentially maybe they could do with 400 acres. Uh, we're trying to take the look at it right now that we don't want to tell them what we want out there. We would like them to uh, go through a process of surveys, community meetings, those sorts of things, and let the public drive what needs to be out at the site instead of us standing over them saying, we're gonna have this out there and this is what we're gonna do. Obviously, we want the public to, to have a large voice in this and they're going to have a large voice in it and we wanna make sure that we hire the right firm, the firm that we feel gives Jacksonville the best opportunity to develop the 400 acres in the best way possible, not just for you and me, but for everybody. So we're excited about that. Uh, we've sent out some uh, requests for proposals. We've reviewed quite a few of them. 
And then later on this week, we're going to actually sit down with four groups and and they're going to talk to us uh, a little more in depth about who they are and what their capabilities are and what they know about Jacksonville and maybe what they think 400 acres can look like. So we're excited about that. We're not ready to do anything publicly yet because we'll, you know, we'll get to a point where we're hire, we'll, we'll, we'll hire one of them and then those things that we just talked about, or I mentioned the, the public input meetings, the ideas, potential partnerships, those sorts of things, those are the things that we'll see moving forward. Any questions about that? It was a long-winded uh, 400 acre speech. <laughs> <laughs> now I just really be concerned. Two things always come out when you get to a facility is parking and getting in and out. Well, and I, and I got to tell you, one of the, so, so some of these groups, and, and listen, we, we, we didn't receive um, proposals from people only in Onslow County. So for, I'll give you some highlights. So people that have done work at Yankee Stadium, people that have done work in London, you know, these are, these are companies that are, some of them are in our backyard, but other, others of them aren't. So they've got some experience on taking spaces, how to make them work efficiently, and almost every one of them addressed transportation and the ability to get in and out of this uh, site for the public. And, and that's very encouraging to me because I think we do need to be careful, uh, not just parking, it's off of Western Boulevard, how we, it's in a neighborhood, how are we gonna do this? You know, that those are things that, I think you're absolutely right, Mr. Ross, that we need to be concerned about. Great, great comment. Call parking lot engineers. Parking lot <clears throat> engineers, there you go. But we're excited. I think Susan's excited. I'm excited. And, and the team of us that are looking at them are, are excited. And uh, uh, can't wait to see. Can't wait to see. Any other comments or yes. questions? Yes, sir. Are these companies national or international? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And they're not just, you know, and most of these companies, just so you understand this process, is uh, you might have one parent company that arms will reach out to a lot of other groups that partner with them to do this sort of thing. So you may have one prime, in other words, one company that says, we're in charge, we're the bidder. And then, but we're gonna hire this engineer from Houston, Texas, this type of engineer. And we're gonna hire a planner, a landscape architect maybe from uh, New York, and we're gonna bring on this group that does this, and they're from here, and they have experience doing these sorts of things. So it's usually not a company that has one skill set. You know, they, they bring on partners, kind of like what we're gonna wanna do with 400 acres, and collaborate and do these sorts of things. So hopefully we'll see that, and what we'll see hopefully is the best of all the worlds, not just the best of one. Great question. Any other comments? All right. All right. I guess I will. I will um, kick us off. Uh, it has been a very exciting couple of months. I thank you all um, for those of you who came out to the open house that we had at Jack Emmy at Recreation Center. We are thrilled. It is open. We are uh, thriving in there, and so I just wanted to kind of give you an update. We actively started on program planning and filling up those spaces in those days. These are just some pictures of the open house. It was a great day. We were thrilled, thrilled, thrilled. Um, I, I see a familiar face right there. <laughs> uh, but we uh, really had a great turnout in the morning. And then in that evening, we had it full of people. And it was it was just a great day for us. So we had, um, we've already started on youth nights. It's an evening program. We had several years ago when we had Jack M. yet uh, prior to Florence. But it's we want to be open for kids to come in. And so... This is pretty much, I want to say, on a Friday night. Um, you know, so we've got basketball actively taking place. And then you can see there, pickleball also taking place. Uh, pickleball some more. We're trying to teach the kids some pickleball. So uh, we've had a dance there. It went really well. It was a beautiful night. They had a great time. Daddy-daughter date night. We're already making it look different than it already is. But we had some nice decorations. And a, and a great crowd of fathers and, and daughters came out. So um, 
super too fast. Yeah, super, super, super cute. <coughs> so we've had some really good events already, and we've been open for, I'd say, what, four, maybe four or five weeks now, give or take. Um, but we have really seen a difference in shifting the stress load of the commons back over to a facility that can handle some of these larger things. This is the staff that worked on that event and they all look fabulous and mm -hmm. did a great job with the, with the kids and the dads. Um, but one, the, one of the big areas that we're able to shift is the pickleball so we can alleviate some of those challenges at the commons and it's allowed us to actually expand other programs at the commons. So it's a little bit of a domino effect, but it's been a nice way to um, share all of our spaces amongst our programs. But we have open play uh, pretty much every day. You can see there we've started TOTS program. So they're, uh, we've had a great turnout with the TOTS. We have pickleball uh, shifted over there on, it says Tuesday, Thursdays. And then we have youth nights also on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and then the Friday nights we save for a lot of our teen programs, lots of teen programs. We've had a great turnout with programming on um, our teen, uh, you know, specific age groups on, the, on those teen, those tough ones, those teens. Some upcoming stuff, we have April 4th at Jack Emmett. All of these are at Jack Emmett. So we have a teen trip to Top Golf. We have TOTS, uh, Spring Break Safari. Those are two demographics that we are really trying to be intentional about targeting. We want our teens to be active and we want our TOTS, our little ones, um, also to have an opportunity for outlet on energy. So these are two, two demographics you're going to see more and more coming out of our office as far as being intentional about that. Adulting 101, that's actually with the teens. And we've had actually adults ask us about that. <laughs> Those are with the younger age group. And then as well as in June, we have a trip for the teens going to a Carolina Tiger Rescue. So these are just some of the things you're going to see coming out of Jack Emmett. Um, we're just happy that we have the space and the availability, as you're aware. We don't always have that availability at the Commons because it gets booked for a lot of other things. We have a lot of things coming up. Um, we've been busy over there for, um, for uh, several, several, several weeks. Um, some other things, we are extremely busy. Michael alluded to his guys, it's, it's mowing season. Um, my equivalent to the mowing season is just all of our summer programs and our spring programs. So we are extremely busy this weekend with egg hunts. We start on Friday night and we have a Friday night flashlight egg hunt for older kids. And then we start off in the morning on Saturday with all the younger kids. And then we end the day with what we call an inclusive egg hunt, which is uh, an egg hunt for special needs kids. So we have magnetic eggs. Uh, beeping eggs and um, eggs that will be lifted up and elevated for kids that, with mobility um, mobility challenges. So happy to do that. We've started summer day camp registration. Megan t can tell you that our summer day camp is going extremely well. Several of our sites have already filled up, and so we're happy that we're also going to add and expand our enrichment program um, and hopefully just try to accommodate as many parents as we can this summer. I mentioned the Top Golf, and we have that, and then a toddler safari. Spring break starts next week, uh, so we have a lot of programs for the kids that are out of school, also during spring break. Michael already alluded to he is um, his guys are diligently making our ball fields beautiful because we're busy busy on them. So we have youth baseball, uh, lots of teams. We have twenty, I want to say twenty three teams. Uh, youth volleyball, tremendous. We were able to add quite a few teams because now we have Jack Emmett, which was the whole goal, I'm happy to say. So we have 24 youth volleyball teams, uh, which, is, which is really um, a success in my eyes. But we also have adult softball starting back up. They do have scrimmages. They've been going at it this week, and then they'll start games. So all of our ball fields, it's a beautiful day at the Commons. If you haven't noticed, you, when you go by, it's just like the best tar time of the year for me when I go by in the evenings or I come out of my office and you've got – kids going out on the ball fields, you've got adults going to play softball, you've got volleyball going in the gym, I mean, and then you have like a beautiful day where there's just people walking and they're riding their bikes and they're walking their dogs. I mean, it's just a beautiful time, um, you know, to see all the activity that we have going on. So I encourage you to certainly stop by if you just want to feel good about what it is we do. <laughs> um, and then shortly after that, we are quick into May. May 6th is our Jamboree event. I'll be sure to share those details as we start advertising, but um, it's, it'll be here before you know it. We have a full schedule of great activities for all the families on May 6th. So we are happy that the Jamboree will be, again, another great event with some really nice uh, sporting tournaments. So we do have a basketball tournament 
as well as a softball tournament scheduled for that weekend. So hopefully we will do our part with some economic impact in, in sport, sports tourism. And then I just want to let you know that the splash pads will be opening for anybody watching. I've already had a couple of calls on when we open back up when it's nice during the weekend. Um, people are ready to go, but we, we will not be able to open those until Memorial Day weekend. Um, our permit doesn't even allow us to open them up sooner. So Memorial Day weekend, our splash pads. Thrilled that we are at back, we are able to open Jack Amiet back up because there's no construction going on. So we'll have both splash pads open and up and running this summer. So uh, we have a lot in the next couple of months. We're thrilled and excited to do it. Um, and then I will report out on where we're at with our next meeting. And, um, or February, April, May. So, yeah. Any questions? I, I, I tend to talk quick when I have a long list. I try to keep, you know, keep things going, but I do tend to keep a short rundown of all the stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah, as far as the um, the open play, I can't I can't recall if we had that <coughs> during the summer months. Will that expand? Like, I know you had two nights. I saw it there from the calendar. Jackie, I mean, yeah, it'll. Yeah, I think the idea is to certainly time. expand it throughout the evenings. It's um, you know we're working uh, through. Yeah, for teams. I thought for teams. Yeah. Yeah. The plan is to expand it during the. The evenings and certainly during the summer okay, we're working through some things that the schedule you saw right there is like a oh, snapshot yeah, yeah, yeah. right now yeah. um, but we are adding and growing and, and kind of um, filling out our spaces and adding staff where needed and, and kind of but yeah that's the goal for the summer definitely I should have more of a, a schedule like that to share with you in May great question though well, one thing I can tell you, though, oh, I mean, yes, it's just a comment, but, you know, I've been going um, over to Jack and Ed, um for the past month now, mm -hmm. and I would say Miss Melanie and her staff, the inside is, they keep it pristine. It's always, it always looks good, and they're on Thank top you. of it. And Mr. Wills and his staff outside, that feel, I know we messed the feel up a little bit playing kickball. That's all right. <laughs> but I noticed he was right out there. After we left, he was right out there on his track. <laughs> I was like, oh, he didn't want it messed up, but yeah. But I want to thank them for it. Yeah, um, absolutely. We, yeah. We, we are glad to have good partnerships in the community, and we certainly want it to be available. So yes. um, we appreciate we appreciate your words. This is Jack Amiette, great job, city council, up and down the line. Uh, wonderful facility. Mm -hmm. You all deserve a lot of credit, which you all did. And um, yes. it's just really, really good. What everybody I think wanted got it done. Yes. So that was the, that's the important thing. It's truly amazing, isn't yeah, it? It really is. is. If, if you step back, it is amazing. Excellent it facility. Is. I yeah, mean, I <clears throat> and, just, and we are gonna. I mean, we are doing. We are going to fill it up, and we are going to keep it busy because that's what that's what we said we would do. And we are certainly certainly happy at the response from the community and. Uh, the toddlers, we had, I think, 25 toddlers out there last week on our first day of toddlers on Mondays. I mean, it's just it's just phenomenal. So I think we're, we are just going to do our due diligence to make sure that the community uses it as a resource because that's certainly, certainly what we work so long and hard for, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we really did. So we're thrilled to be able to do that. And I really... Um, I look forward to seeing, you know, as time goes on, how much we're able to accomplish there. I trust most of you. Most of, if not all, that your feedback has been positive from the definitely from the population in the yep. community. Yep. That's good for sure. And I'll mention too that you know since the construction is done, so you know while we've been in construction the past year, we had to you know lots of other things had to kind of hold up like the splash pad and the ball field. And so that's the other thing that Michael's guys are back on the ball field because our Carolina men's league is back on playing on that field. Um, so we'll be able to put that field back in rotation as well. So it's almost like we got three for the price of one. I know that's not accurate, but it, it brings back the entire complex. Um, and so we're happy that we get back to doing all of, all of using all of that facility, including his um, new building for the maintenance guys. So I know they're happy to have a little bit more space and, and room to, to work with. So yeah, it's just like anything, you know, you got to get acclimated back to it. You know, we haven't been over there in a while, and we <laughs> haven't had. Right. And look, there's a luxury to having that building over there because people, uh, you know, w we work through every uh, corner of the city, and sometimes it's not efficient to go back to the commons. Having a building like 
check MEF for somebody that's centrally located, uh, that's part of being efficient, not having to drive back to the commons because you need a widget, whatever that widget is, and picking it up at Jack Emmett, which is three to five minutes away as opposed to the 20 minute drive, which is, that I call that downtime. You know, we need our people being productive, not on the road. So. Yeah, that's good stuff. Any other questions? Any other? Okay. Do you, yes, sir. Do you have, an, I guess, an estimate of economic impact from like the basketball tournament? I have it for, um, yeah, I do for so we, last so. year, and I do for East Coast Invitational. Mm -hmm. I know that for the Jamboree, we have two weekends booked. We specifically split them up a little bit, um, but we have one age group coming, I want to say in a couple of weeks, the younger ones, and then the other age group is coming on the weekend of the Jamboree, and then we'll collect all of that data, where they come from, where they stayed, um, you know, and be, based off of when they play, we always have a good estimate of kind of, there's a... Uh, um, a calculation out there that you know they eat this much when they're here and that kind of thing. So I do have it for previous years, and I have it okay. for East Coast Invitational too. We definitely track it for that tournament. It's pretty tremendous on the East Coast Invitational. Oh, just one. And I'm we, sure there was a good impact from, like for example, we just hosted a pickleball yeah. tournament with pickleball. 180 people. Yeah, Not tremendous. all of them obviously lived in Jacksonville. A lot of them mm -hmm. came from out of town. What does that mean? That means hotel rooms and gas tanks mm -hmm. getting filled up and, mm -hmm. absolutely and they love the commons location because it is so close to the restaurants so uh, i mentioned earlier we've been extremely busy one of the um uh, one of the large events we hosted was a boxing tournament carolina gloves and maybe you you saw it or you yeah, came out yeah so carolina gloves was tremendous they had uh, hundreds of boxers come in from all over, and they boxed for three days. And so we did get the numbers. The Sports Commission supplied the uh, economic impact on that, and it was tremendous. I don't want to even pretend to recite what I think it might be, but it was tremendous. Um, and then the following weekend, we had our pickleball tournament. We had 196 people register for a pickleball tournament. They played for basically two and a half days, and a lot of them from definitely from out of town. Lots of Virginia folks, South Carolina, um, other parts of this state, um, and so they stayed. And then we hosted the Bridal Expo, and the whole point of the Bridal Expo is to bring also people in from other areas. So we've been really busy there and, and really trying to be intentional and, and um, you know, making sure that everybody is aware of those opportunities when we have them at, at the comments, for sure. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Open to anything else? Thank you. Starting out with the, uh, with the uh, Planning Board Advisory. Planning Board? You skipped me. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. That's okay. I didn't know if you wanted to use it. You have any on. It's not as long as it used to be because we, <laughs> we didn't have a meeting last month. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes I think we're the, the, the perennial not have a meeting club. Uh, really. <laughs> but when we did have a meeting, we discussed retention ponds and the fact that if you put up a retention pond, it would be optional, but if you decide to put, I'm sorry, if you fence your retention pond, it's optional, but if you decide to fence your retention pond, it must be pond, it must be decorative. It can't be chain link fence. So we're thinking that will probably help make it look a little nicer where we have retention ponds. I don't know if we can do anything about the current ones now, but in the future it may make it a little better. Um, a lot of people from time to time will call me or ask me somewhere, they'll say, well, what's going up here, what's going up there, and what's going up here? And I have to remind them that since we did the Unified uh, Development Ordinance, it, set, it sets out a bunch of guidelines that you have to meet. And once a developer meets those guidelines, they don't have to come to the planning board. So the only time as a planning board we see a, a, a design is when it triggers a special use permit. So a lot of these places, for example, start the Starbucks. Uh, we didn't see that because it met all the requirements. Um, and I did ask a question, you know, what are you going to do when traffic backs up, when traffic backs up into 17 and, and Cheney? And, you know, it, it'll be very similar to what happened with the Dunkin' Donuts just a couple blocks away where traffic got so bad it was backing up into the, into the main street and police had to get involved and then that triggers them, you know, to have to do something else. So um, it may lead us, uh, you know, we were talking before the meeting, we were discussing the prevalence of, of drive-throughs now. And uh, 
whether it was COVID related or whether it's because a lot of restaurants have closed their dining rooms in certain hours and uh, or because it's harder to staff, but we're seeing a lot more people in the drive-thrus than we used to. And that may mean that not just Jacksonville, but other cities have to right. revisit their regulations on how long, how much stacking you allow in a drive-thru. Uh, you know, the, the double drive-thrus like you see in places like Chick-fil-A and McDonald's that you know, help alleviate some of that, but uh, we'll be on it. But that's it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All righty. So we'll go with the park reports, Mr. Ross. Uh, went out to Wooten Park, ran into a staff member who was cleaning bathrooms. Talked to him briefly. Didn't get his name, but nice guy. And told him if he had any problems, let us know. And uh, he was satisfied. So the uh, park was clean. All the equipment worked. Water fountains not been turned on, right? Water on water fountains. It didn't work. I figured it was just because it was shut off. It had off. been a cold day before that where we shut them okay. off sometimes. All right. Uh, park's in great shape. The only thing, uh, just a recommendation, you might want to look at it is the front of the building where the bathrooms are might need some paint. All white paint. Yeah, we've the talked about doing some. Oh, okay. Building. And, uh, but park is always well kept. And uh, I think I picked up one plastic bottle. That was it. They do a really good job and they pay attention. I mean, it's just not one place. It's all, it's all over. So, I'm trying. Good job. Thank you. Pass that along. Mr. Spring. Um, Sherwood Forest definitely meets the uh, conditions of a local park because it's intended and usually visited by just the local people there. I find that out sometimes when I park there and people look at me like, why am I here? Um, but I'm not going to wear a hat and, you know, but I, I explain to them why I'm, I'm looking at things. But um, I didn't have any problems at Sherwood. It, it looks nice. It's, it's, even though we, we're not having neighborhood parks anymore, it's still going to service. Forest. Absolutely. Uh, Branchwood, much the same, except, you know, of course, there, there'll never be anything for parking there, and I don't think, right. and uh, probably because you just can't do anything in the landscape, but, but the park itself looks fine, and there are people, uh, the nice thing about me going to Branchwood is once I cross that bridge, which I still love that Trex Bridge, um, that the, the people can be back there in the playground area, and they don't see me, they don't even notice me, and I can walk around and right. look at things, but... Uh, Again, those are both neighborhood parks, and I've explained to somebody how neighborhood parks came to be from developers donating parcels of land for parks, and how it becomes a cost thing where you can, if you have, if every neighborhood had a neighborhood park, you wouldn't have the money to do some of the parks you have right. the way you do. Right. So, uh, anyway, everything else is clean. Thank you. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Um... I'll go next, Eddie. Um, Georgetown Park, um, no issues at all. Um, looked really good. Um, I was out there, I rode through over the weekend and, and checked it out. So it, it was that I was out there. It was, it was kids out there playing basketball. I think it was Nets all right. Saturday or something. The Nets all right? You net, get, yeah, I didn't notice it. They, um, yeah, they, you must have just put them out there brand new, right? Well, I mean, we're focusing on uh, okay. nets. Well, you know, we're nobody bought an nobody outdoor took court. Down. You want to have good nets. Yeah, yeah they look good. good. They look good. The, the, the court awesome. looks good. Um, I didn't get a chance to check out the... Um, bathroom. No, not no, the bathroom. Trail. Front, the trail, the, the uh, exercise equipment on the right, trail. Right. I know the last time I did look, I meant to look at it again, but the seating on a few of them, mm -hmm. I think the weather is just that it, it got to a few of them. Um, so I don't know, is is that our responsibility to replace that? Oh, yeah, that something's yeah. not right out there, absolutely. Yeah. So it was, it was the seating on a few of the, uh, okay. the equipment out there. Just It's just time got it, that's all. We'll look at it. Yeah. Um, Sturgeon City looks real good, so no issues at all out there. <clears throat> and uh, I think that was it. That was all I had to tell you about over there. Um, the grill, the grill at Sturgeon City. Uh -huh. um, there, you did put a brand new grill over there on that one. Um, 
the uh, picnic area, the shelter. Yeah. yeah, so that's fine. Yeah, it looked really, it looked really nice up there. Cause I think, did you paint it or something? Cause it, no, we put some new curls out. Okay. All right. Yeah. Look, look good. Look good. That's it for me, Mr. Maxwell. Phillips Park, just like the Commons, with the uptick in weather, so does the attendance of those parks. Right. And of course, I live in the Commons, so I see it morning, noon, and in the evenings. Right. And as Miss Susan said, everybody's out there right now. And it, both parks are in wonderful condition. You all are doing a great job. Thank you, Mr. Banks. Well, I'll pass that along. And I've already asked you the one question I had. So, and just so you know, what we're going to do is on that, and, you know, Mr. Maxwell had, had talked to me a little bit about the existing basketball court out there. It's, and I'm going to use some terminologies and a Probably not correct, but there's like hicks, chips, dugout areas, and some of the concrete on the basketball court. So what we'll do is we'll, you know, we have a concrete group at the city that works in the streets department. Maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll get up with our, our co-workers in streets and we'll have them come over there, take a look at what the site looks like, and they may be able to do some grinding and, and look I don't want to speak for them because I don't know enough about concrete mm -hmm. but I know they're, they're I think the, we need to do our due diligence to see if there are things that they can do to make what is out there a little better and we'll take those steps to do that and um, another question uh, what is the possibility of putting a outdoor square fiberglass backboard out in the cup. Have you been um the park in Maysville? No, but I know they have those, absolutely. For the basketball court? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can put fiberglass outside. They make they make uh outdoor fiberglass backboards now. Mm -hmm. That's something I'll look at. Um I wanted to give an update actually on a project we've just completed at Kerr Street. So um, one, of the, one of the nice things we were able to do with um, Jack Emmett, if you remember, there was a shelter there and we had to take it down to make room for the new entry. So we have the playground. We didn't move the playground, but off to the, I guess, left of the, the playground at Jack Emmett, we had a shelter and tables underneath it. So we were actually, it's taken a year, but we were able to repurpose that shelter and it did take a little bit of work and we had to pour a new cement pad, but I wanted to give, um, you know, kudos to Michael's guys. Uh, we've, and honestly, the engineering department with the city, but we took that shelter and we took it to Kerr Street. We have a lot of people that rent Kerr Street Rec Center and have a lot of nice events and family reunions. So it was a great way to repurpose and re, you know recycle that uh, that shelter it's blue it looks great it's in still great shape but we poured a larger pad it's a larger shelter and redid the sidewalks and his uh scott uh Perosi with the city his folks um put you know the tables back down and so i imagine we'll get a grill out there but sure. um we're just really uh i just want to let you know the efforts that it, we go so that we can you know, be smart with our resources that we have and repurposing that shelter was a great example of that. So again, Jack M. Yet is, you know, we're getting something else somewhere Reaching else. Out. Now. Yeah. <laughs> you so, know, it's just- been So a, it's I want to piggyback on that a little bit and tell you, we didn't randomly do that. And there wasn't initially a plan to put that over there, but uh, you know, at the city, we do inspections at time on our existing facilities. And what Kerr Street, if you aren't aware, uh, or weren't aware, had a wooden shelter. Mm -hmm. That's what was it? Where the picnic table was. Right, right. right. That was based off of wood. And unfortunately, that shelter had been there for a long time and it was dilapidated and it was it became a safety issue. So as timing would have it, mm -hmm. that gets checked. We have a problem over there. We have to take the shelter down. Jack Amy, it's being redone. We really didn't have anywhere to put the shelter at Jack Amia and wham, great idea. Let's move the shelter over to here. We can utilize the shelter. It's not going to hurt Jack Amia because we weren't able to put the shelter back where it was. And so, you you know, it was very uh, unintentional, but then became very intentional to, to maximize 
inventory that we already had instead of having to go out and start yes. from scratch and spend fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars putting something up that we already have. Yes. Yeah. And Mr. Maxwell, I'm, we're sorry that we never heard you. No. All right. All right. No, of course. The uh pier on Kerr Street, is the city responsible for that? Yes. Oh, okay. Just yes. Yes. Just curious. That little small area. Yeah. The fishing pier. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I know there was one thing too. There was a conversation about. That's a very popular pier. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you did. It there was some question about the restroom at Kirk. What what was the outcome on that? I can't remember. I know we were talking about it. So there is probably not the best answer for you, but it's still in the works. You're talking about the new restrooms that's been proposed and building down there, shelter slash restroom, yeah. down closest to the marina. Um, that's a project that we. Um, have had some challenges with, to say the least. Um, we had funding from both FEMA and a part of grant that um, Michael had gotten for that project. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things that it's been a challenge. The cost that's come back from many bids that we've put out there has been way out of our comfort zone as far as our budget, uh, budget has. So we continue to work and get creative on that project. Michael might be able to yeah, share so, some so, of the work. So, so engineering has been working, we call it uh, doing some additional work, we call it value engineering. So they've actually uh, sat down with some of the builders to find out a, a way to do this better. And, and one of the things that the city is looking at, and I'm not suggesting they're gonna do it, I don't know those answers yet, but one of the things they are looking at is, uh, if you were looking at the water from the road and, and Hopefully you've noticed we put a little nautical uh, border up there so people don't drive in there if you haven't noticed that. But um, one of the, the, the bathroom was gonna be on what I would say the right 20% of the property, okay? Uh, if you can visualize that. So everything, the 80% to the left was gonna be, uh, you know, the grass, shelter type of picnic bench, potentially even some parking as an example. What we may look at doing is moving the actual site from that 20% over to the left some, and why, why would we do that? Because the area where the bathrooms are going is in a flood area. Moving it out of the flood area, and, and we're not sure that we can do it, but if we can do that, will obviously allow us to build bathrooms like you see at um, at Wooten Park or at the landing or at Georgetown. You know, in other words, we won't have to put them on stilts because if you're in that flooded area, you have to build up. Uh, there's nothing wrong with building up except for one thing. It costs, it costs, whole, it costs a lot of money to do that. So. I know they're working on that, and I know that they have spent some time with uh, some of the construction people trying to figure out a way for the city to uh, spend their money in the best, again, the best possible way to spend their money. And uh, I feel certain, and, and I'm sure Susan does, and I think everybody is still on board that we're going to get bathrooms down there. We just need to make sure they're the right bathrooms sitting in the right spot. Is there anything like Porter Jones temporarily there? Not on that site, no. What we have is um, we do have restrooms that are available at the building. Right. So we have those external doors that do technically service a lot of people that are on the tennis courts or on the playground. So we try to let people know that those, those restrooms are available should anybody need them, but right. we do not have any temporary restrooms located, at, you know, closer to the marina. Any other information? Yeah, I want to add a couple of things right. real quick. So, so I want to talk about Northeast Creek Park and hopefully moving forward what you, you hopefully will see out there. We have been uh, working with the engineering department, you know, obviously on the playground side. We've the last couple of years, you know, we've put the adaptive play, playground in and we have new restroom facility over there and obviously we have a splash pad 
and we've changed the look and landscaping of that park. And But there is one more element over there that we still need to address, and that is the bathrooms that were built in 1987. And we are working, or I am working with engineering to do some value engineering over there. There was a point in time where we thought that we would give those bathrooms a facelift. And then there was the thought that the facelift's gonna cost as much as putting new bathrooms in. And then we said, well, you know, let's step back, look at these this facility, which is important over there. It is very important for bathrooms to be over there and for people to use. It's one of our larger shelters. Uh, obviously, family reunions and things like that are very popular out there. So we need to keep that viable in our system for, for our public. And um, so we are working with our engineering department here to uh, create a uh, more efficient looking shelter to the eye and more eye appealing. That hopefully doesn't break the bank in doing that. And just be aware of that. I mean, these are things that we're trying to spend our dollars in a good way, in a, a wise way, in an efficient way to, to also make a difference moving forward. So just be aware of that. I think it's important that you guys are aware of that and know that. Um, for some of you, sometimes uh, uh, water fountains are a hot topic and we are in the process of changing out some of our water fountains. We are over at Richard Ray doing that today we're going to end up going down to LP Willingham. And these water fountains are, are water fountains like we don't have in our park system. They, they will have the bottle fillers on them, which will uh, allow for people who uh, they don't just have to come over and get a drink of water if they've got uh, their, their thermos or their bottle with them and want to fill up, they'll be able to do that at those fountains. And so, so as we go through the next couple of uh, months, You'll see these starting to pop out, not at every park yet, because we're, we're, we have to take steps to do this, but you'll start seeing those things come available in, in maybe a park near you soon. So just be aware of that. And uh, I just wanted to make you aware of those things. And the last thing I'll, I'll talk, as, as Mr. Maxwell talked about, <coughs> excuse me, the pier down at LP Wellingham. Uh, yes very popular pier. We uh, have a large clientele that has a lot of ownership to that pier. They have a lot of ownership to that area down there. They are a asset to us as a, as a maintenance department because they do have a lot of ownership down there. They don't like people that come down there and throw their trash down or are, are maybe don't do the things that we would like them to do in park in the park, and they're very good about uh, policing that area down there. And that's there's a value to that. There's a lot of ownership down there. Uh, we do have money in our CIP that will address that peer moving forward. Now, obviously, it's not going to be this year, probably or next, but. Uh, to create uh, a, a better peer that maybe goes out a little further. Uh, we work with our FMS people in the city, which is our facility maintenance people who really do most of our woodwork to uh, make sure that that peer is safe. And, and it is, but uh, obviously we do have to keep our eye on that peer. It's older. And uh, I wanted you to know that long term, we'll uh, hopefully... Uh, create a different look down there, much in the way we have at Northeast Creek. Uh, now we have our marina down at um, that area, and we're going to put bathrooms up, and then hopefully the pier will be done as we gallivant through the park system. We ride that way at least two to three times a right. week, and I see all the, it's a, like 12 guys out there. Oh, there's a mayor down there the whole nine yards. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah they've been doing it for since we were little boys. Yeah. I mean, they, they're, they're well organized down there. They, they, and they police themselves very well. And, and you know, that's, there's a value, again, I can't tell you what the value is to us. I can't put a price on that. They're, they're not mean or rude to anybody, but they're, they just have ownership in that area. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing to see your public care.
Now, that land where you do the tree lighting there, mm -hmm. is that the city's as well? So, um, what that gazebo? Where the gazebo is the city's, okay? The land where actually the tree is at is not the city's property. Uh, an individual owns that property, and we have an understanding with them that we use that, and we maintain that area, okay? So if you look at the tree line over there on the right hand, if you're looking towards the water from um, the road right before you get to that, and you look down, and I'm going to guess here, okay, because I'm not going to go out and do a survey, but about, there's some landscaping that goes down that right-hand side, the home, one of the homeowners has. So if you came off that landscaping 10 to 15 feet, give or take, that is actually not our property, hmm. all the way down to the water. But there's been an agreement, and you know we obviously mow that area, and we try and maintain it because we're good neighbors and we want to be good neighbors. Obviously, they have been a very good neighbor to us by allowing us to utilize that area for a Christmas tree and that sort of thing. And that's been an agreement that's been uh, for 20 something years and would hope that it would continue. It's a great question though. Not many people know that. I've always wondered. Not many people know that. Great question. I've talked enough. <sighs> Any other information? Anyway, all right. All right, so we'll adjourn this meeting. Well, we have one city. Well, I'm sorry, I'm jumping it's okay. in. It's okay, it's okay. One city. I have my glasses on. It's again. okay. No, so it's I put them all late. <laughs> uh, I don't have any slides on this, but um, we, d we had a, a new thing. One of our efforts, obviously, from the city um, you know, management and um, from our HR folks is we are really making a concerted effort to uh, recruit and to hire and to retain uh, quality uh, employees and really just focus on uh, what we're doing as a city to recruit and bring people on board to our team as a city. So uh, we got together with our HR uh, folks uh, sometime back and uh, Michael has had success with this, but we did a, a hiring event. And the idea was to do it during the time frame when college students are home from spring break. Um, it primarily affects Michael and myself because we're the ones that hire a lot for the summer. We hire the bulk of temporary employees, but obviously we want to recruit people into other departments, police, fire, uh, you know, all of the other public services departments. So we did a hiring event on March 10th and it was held at the new transit station. It's a beautiful building and it was extremely successful. Uh, I had several positions available for all of my summer day camp. He hires a ton of folks uh, and folks for all of his crews and, you know, getting the mowing done and all of the things that, he, that they do. But I can um, successfully tell you right now that we hired all of our slots um, and we are s uh, sufficiently staffed for the summer, which is the earliest we've ever been able to do that. Um, I think the spring event really went well, but we've made some really good efforts as far as being competitive with our pays. Um, and that's certainly helped us as well and just really trying to promote the value of working for the city. But I'll let Michael tell you how many folks he hired that day and then since then. Thank so, you. you know, we traditionally try and hire around 19 people a summer. And our last three summers, I think the maximum people we've had it on any one day has been seven over the last three years. Uh, during and, and we hired, basically, we have a 31-week window where we're mowing grass and doing ball fields and you know, maintaining the city on a routine basis. And, I, and you're looking at me, Mr. Pastor, I want to be clear. Yes, seven people on any one day would have been the most we would have had, in addition to our full-time staff. But, but uh, and we, it's tough. It's very tough. It's uh, not easy. Uh, we've, we're at about 10 right now with hopes. We have some interviews this week. I had interviews again last week, in addition to uh, uh, the day that uh, we did this. Uh, we're very encouraged by what we're seeing uh, in comparison to where we have been the last three years. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, some of my guys are like, you know, if we get 10, we'll be, you know, that that's, and, you know, the reality is we need 19, but 10 would be such a relief compared to where we've been. Uh, so for those 
that are out there that are maybe watching tonight. Um, we're available. We're competitive. The city is a great place to work. It can provide an, an awesome life for you or your family. Um, I tell this to a lot of our seasonal people. We have 29 full-time people. At one time or another, 75% of our staff was one-time attempt for us. Uh, we are a great um, training ground for a lot of a lot of departments in the city. We have people that start with us that end up on Susan's side of the house. We have people that start with us and they end up in the streets department. We even have people at the garage. We have people that start with us that end up in uh, our finance department. Yes, our finance department. We have people that started with us that were are now firemen. So we have, we, you know, there's, there's value to get your foot in the door. The city's an awesome place to work and we want the public to know that, think about us, we're a good place. For one city moment. Yeah, for one city moment. Okay. You can put these on, make sure. <laughs> You're right. Uh, yeah, I'm right now. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we're gonna adjourn this meeting. Uh, next meeting we have May 22nd at <coughs> uh, 6 p.m. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank yes, you. sir.